Okay, greetings homesteaders. This is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. And I do not have my smooth with me, but I have something I want to show. So I'm going to be as steady as I can. I'm holding this with two hands. So that looks pretty good, actually. All right, well, I'm working on this grazing project, really, is what it is. And the last couple of years, I haven't been as diligent about grazing as I know I need to be. So what I've really been doing is I've just been turning them out on fields after I get done cutting hay. <clears throat> and I wasn't turning them out as soon as I could. <coughs> you can get them out pretty early. And the whole idea here, I'm going to turn this around so you can see my, my herd. Alright, well there's my homestead herd. And they're right on the edge of the junk pile. And uh, if you think you really have a real farm, but you don't have a junk pile, you, you don't have a real farm. Every farm has a junk pile. So I put that stuff here so we don't have to look at it up the house. But it's good stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, there they are. It's probably, I don't know, 1030 or so. They've been milked. And we came down and we moved fences. <clears throat> but we did a little bit more than that. Actually, we put in this temporary permanent fence. Okay, so this temporary permanent fence are some pieces of fiberglass pole that a friend gave me. And so we've driven them in and put just a regular piece of uh, fencing wire in there. <clears throat> so that's that's carrying electricity all the way from the barn which is way over there okay so I have hot fence all this way now this is my one of my hay fields and it's probably one of the best hay fields on here look at that look at that blowing <clears throat> but it's early June so we usually don't cut this until after about the 15th of June so it's you know it's close it's close got a few weeks to go and we're getting plenty of rain and it's it's going to be a good crop of hay but i don't want them up here but this is the edge of the hay field and this is great i mean they call this riparian area so you have trees in here you have there's brambles and there's lots of scruffy stuff there's good places for all the little critters to live um, but i can't mow it <clears throat> i can't get that hay but they can so Here's the way this works. Let's say I get them out June 1st or May 15th, let's say, May 15th. And I can go all the way until uh, November 15th. That would be May, June, July, August, September, October, November. <coughs> so that's better than half a year. And that's a really good deal because if they're getting what they need and I don't have to give them dry hay, then I need less hay. And if they're able to eat things that I really wouldn't want to make into hay anyway, like these brambles, they actually eat those, um, then that's a good thing. So we're going to get our milk and we're going to get all of our beef. Now this section right here, you can see the grass is really pretty high. I just opened them up, opened that up for them, and they haven't realized it yet. And the trick of this rotational grazing is you want them to eat just the tops of the grasses off, and you want to constantly be opening up new ground for them, <clears throat> and, and it's a psychological thing for them. If I just, let's say I just gave them this whole field they would go and they would go from alfalfa plant to alfalfa plant because that's what they like and then the alfalfa plant would sprout up a little bit more in a couple days they'd go back to it and they'd get it again and you don't want that because then they'll kill it so you only want to give them about what they need in a day and so that's what i've done here they have what they need for about a day and 
when I let them out up there, instead of them stopping along the way to get things that have popped up again, they want to get out here. And then they're going to stay out here. It's like a race to get out here. I'm surprised they haven't stepped over the line yet. It takes them a couple of minutes to realize that uh, there isn't a temporary fence in the way. Because <clears throat> if, they've, if they've experienced it, they think that it might still be there. But what, what we have happening now is we're getting in a routine. So this morning I came out, I came out kind of early. I went up to the barn, got all the milking equipment in there, made some noise. There's a bell in there, I rang that. I came out and I yelled for Moon. And she heard me and she started coming. This is a herd. They're all herd animals and they're gonna stay together. And so when she started coming, they all came. And when they came up, I locked them in and that gave us a little bit of time to get out here and move things around. Um, but now what I will do, now that I have, I have this temporary or permanent temporary fence set up, it frees up more of my equipment and I'll just show you this uh, this is a real you know this is a pretty cheap one that I can keep this this uh, poly wire on and I have a little bit better one let's see I'll turn around I'll show it to you and it's right there so if you if you see how this is connected on the fence it's got a little hook on it And it hooks on right there and then this that entire wire is electrified right now because i have it hooked up over here there's a pigtail and then i have it hooked up right here now i can unelectrify it just by taking this off and then it's cold but as soon as i put it on here that is hot as can be all right, so now what I'll do is I have a bunch of these freed up and then I will set the next fence going down here. So possibly tomorrow morning, maybe, maybe not. Um, we're in a real growth flush right now. Possibly tomorrow morning, all I would do is take this fence out and then away they go to the next section. Now, this perimeter fence is actually what they call a lane. See, it's up against the hard fence. There's the hard fence there. And on the other side of that is also grazing area. Not right here, particularly because there's, there's a cabin right there. It's my son's built that years ago. But we will let the cows in here and graze this off. Why not? why not keep that down i don't have to mow and keep that growth down and and they turn all this beautiful grass into milk and beef so it's a really nice deal but then along this lane that we've built there's going to be gates and these gates dump into different fields so this gives me the capability to put those cows wherever I want them. And all I really have to do is ride out ahead of them and close a gate and then later, later open a gate. And then they take themselves off of it every morning voluntarily. I don't have to go get them. And uh, it's, it's a pretty nice situation because I can milk and move the cows in a relatively short period of time for what I'm getting out of it. Those guys all together, if I was going to give them, let's say, square bales, they would eat in a day five square bales. And a square bale, rule of thumb on a square bale is about five dollars. So it's costing me, you know, let's say 25 bucks a day to feed them. But now, uh, during the summer months, it's going to be six or so months here, 
it won't cost me any more than the effort it takes to come out and move this fence and let them in areas where I cannot utilize the grass without them. So they're actually working for me. They don't know it. They don't know it. But they're helping me now. And when they get in these riparian areas, right, and they disturb the ground in there, those areas take off as well. We'll see a lot of new growth in there. And then there's another strategy, and I'm gonna utilize this strategy. I'm gonna tell you about this. This is, this is hot stuff here. Um, I have a field here that used to be a pig field. And you can go back and you can see videos from a long time ago when I first let him in there. It was so thick you could hardly move around in there. Who knows what was growing in there? All kinds of stuff. It was really wet. It was the area where my neighbor said he got a tractor stuck in there in the 50s. And uh, the guy that owned this property, old guy, his name was Stubb. He said to him, you damn fool, I don't even take my mules in there. That's how wet it is. It's real wet, but a lot of stuff grows in there. And a lot of that stuff we turned into pork. And now I'm not going to be growing pork on that field anymore, or pigs on that field. So I'm going to use it for beef cattle. So what I'm going to do, get this, I'm going to make them a feed that they're going to get a little bit of every day. Not much, not much. It's going to be ground up bread, and then I'm going to put seed in it. And I'm going to get all kinds of different seed. That seed will go through a cow. It will. And every place where they flop out there, they're going to be planting for me. So, you know, it's not going to be really that great if you just did it one time. But if you do it every single day throughout the summer and you want to plant alfalfa out there, you want to plant trefoil, you want to plant timothy grass, they're all very small seeds. <clears throat> That is the way to do it. That is the way to do it. That's how you build prairie. So that uh, pig field, uh, it is too wet and it's too rough at this point for me to cut hay off of. And I really don't need to. I can cut enough hay off of what I have that is flat and straight and just use that for a grazing field. And wait till we get going on that. Wait till I show you that. There is so much out there for them. It's really exciting, actually, because we could take a field like that, plant things out there, you know, graze it once, get a bunch of stuff planted, to do some broadcast seeding, do some poop seeding, and then by fall, you know, get them off, let them graze it once. By fall, there'll be a lot more stuff that has come in during the, like, August. A lot of stuff will come in, and so we'll have a really nice, thick field so the goal of the <clears throat> the grazer at that point is if I've got a really thick field with a lot of forage on it and I can keep my cows out there until Christmas well I'm gaining $30 a day let's say for this particular herd you know I've had herds that have been bigger that cost me more per day to feed but right now I'm figuring these guys at eh, 30 bucks a day if I was gonna and that's just rule of thumb like if I was gonna buy square bales from somebody and feed it to them I don't use square bales and I don't buy hay but I gotta start someplace um, my round bales are 30 bucks but it would take them nearly 10 days to go through two of them right so there you go all right they they finally made it down here i'll turn this around and show you some happy cows this is the tribe so i know i'm not going to wear anybody out by looking at farm stuff yep there they found some the new stuff at this point though you know the first few days getting them out on grass it's all new to them 
now it's it's getting a little bit more ho-hum and their bellies are full so they're not real excited about this now they're not moving out here as quickly as they were but still i don't think there's anything more peaceful than to watch this go on i think i'd be feeling a lot better if i wasn't showing you the junk pile too but it is nice to see them out here and when they are full they don't push on fences so they don't try anything you can see here's the the ro the path and this is kind of a walking path kids ride their motorcycles on it and if i'm going to come out here and take an evening drive with my oaks on then we would drive on this you know and so we won't get a lot of cutting off it here but the more I learn about grazing, the less hay I need. In, in, this, in this year, this year, um, I ended up, my last round bale is in their feeder as we speak. Right? So, let's say, and they're not too interested in it. They go up there and they see it, might take a bite, but they're not really that interested. But now doing this, I have options. Let's say we get a lot of rain, which we've been getting a lot of rain. They haven't even gotten the, the corn planted around here. It hasn't affected me, this type of farming. It really doesn't. Uh, but let's say that we've got, we got like a week's worth of really heavy rain, which we've seen. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want the cows out here because they're heavy and they'll break up this in such a way that they could really do a lot of damage. Maybe not this many of them, but if you had 30 of them, say, going, they could do a lot of damage. Well, in that case, I can just keep them up the barn in the morning and let things dry out a little bit and then let them out. So I can, I can protect my, my land here from the damage that they would do, you know, if I didn't have that capability to do that. All right, let me turn this around. Here they come. Give you the, the line up here. This is Rose. There's uh, Calvin. Camera shy, huh? Moon. Fawn. Black one's Hobbs. And then the light crew's coming up. These are next year's. That'd be Ruby right there. She's gonna be a milk cow. This little black one right here is Cole. He's a boy. So he's gonna be freezerish. There's a milk cow. Heifer. We might sell her. Is Cece. I'm keeping her. Really like her. She's nice and friendly. And this one is, uh, I forget that one's name, but we're selling, we may sell her too. It's a female for milking. So they've reached the end. This is where they're going to be terminated right here. This is as far as they can go. And that's what they do. Now they'll probably stand around and eat for a while, but it looks like they've all had quite a bit. And they'll probably just lay down after lunch and then they'll start eating again okay see ya